I don't know, it just make me feel stupid, you know, like why do I want to travel here? What's good you guys and welcome on today's episode. How are you all doing? I hope you guys are doing great. And if you're here for the very first time, where have you been? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Now don't make it your last time. So make sure you smash the subscribe button before you click out. In today's video, we are going to be talking about this Asian American creator on TikTok who visited France and she documented a whole experience and posted it on TikTok. There was a particular one she posted that has been going viral. It was a video where she was literally in tears about how the people of France are treating her, how French people are basically treating her. And this has sparked a lot of conversation because French people are coming to the defense of other French people in their country saying it's not like that. And some are even saying she has high expectation and that is the reason why she's feeling the way she's feeling. I am going to roll the clip in a second because this is going viral and people are coming in hard on it. Please relax and let's just get right into it. I don't know, it just make me feel stupid. You know, like why do I want to travel here? Um. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm just filming this video here in uh, Lyon, France. It's my first time visiting. Um, to be honest, the experience is very isolating. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful city. Um, has a lot to do and see and to discover, but I don't recommend for solo traveler or people or someone who doesn't speak French because it's a very um, isolating experience. People here, they seem very indifferent. I had no problem meeting people and socializing in general in Italy or even in Germany. Uh, people tend to be colder, but I had no problem whatsoever because I'm a very social person. But in France, the experience is very different. I feel very isolated. Um, I just, yeah, people make you feel bad for not knowing their culture or speaking their language. Um, I haven't really met anybody in here. I've been here for five, six days now. Um, I almost feel stupid for coming here, spending money. I even bought a French hat. You know, I'm here to learn, to explore. But the experience is just, I don't know. I don't really like it she was visiting and let me tell you something i don't think you understand how much french people do lack of empathy and that's maybe why we may seem rude to you we may seem cold but really it's all about empathy and compassion which does not exist here and especially in lyon lyon isn't that famous but people living in lyon are worse than parisians even i have hard times making friends getting to know people, meeting new people, build trust in my relationships. So I cannot even imagine how tourists see us. You also have to understand that Emily in Paris is the opposite of living in France. Like, <laughs> Frenchmen are not romantic at all. And it just amazes me how you have so much expectations of France. Where does it come from? Every French people you will meet will tell you the same thing. We love our country, we love our culture, we just don't love the people there. People over here just don't know empathy. They will let you cry alone in the street and pass over you and not even look at you. And yeah, this is definitely a French thing. You have a problem, it's your problem. I don't mind it. I wouldn't recommend to come to France all alone. You will meet certain people, of course, but do not expect people coming to you. You have to get to them. You have to appear polite. You have to appear like you have good intentions. Maybe then they will open a little bit. But yeah, even I as a French person, I hesitated a lot before asking some kind of pieces of information to someone in the streets. 
because I know that the side eye that will give me huh <laughs> yeah I feel like French is in such a bad place at the moment as a lot of other countries but the country is suffering the people is suffering you have low vibrations here in France I think if you are spiritual you will get it and get what I'm talking about just lower your expectations France isn't what it used to be France will never be what you expect it to be just Go enjoy the food, go enjoy the landscapes, go enjoy the music. But the people don't cry over them because they literally don't care because they do not have empathy. I'm spending money, I even bought a French hat. That no. you are wearing like an American tourist and also saying it like that it sounds so American to so many French people. So this is not a this. This is just to help you guys navigate around French people because that's not going to be seen as a compliment. That's going to see, be seen as ridiculous for the least or maybe even insulting. Not only because it's very typically American performative, like I'm not racist, I put a black square on my Instagram. I'm here to learn, that's why I bought a beret and I'm wearing it like a tourist. Now, it's not a crime to be a tourist, but you know, when you're going somewhere, you need to respect people who are there. And in France, the first thing, the essential thing is language. And the thing to know, if you don't speak French, go to people, say, Bonjour, je suis, and then say your name, and then say, je ne parle pas français, or say, je suis touriste. And they're going to find it cute. They're going to say, oh, she's making an effort. You know, at least she tried the bonjour. Because if you don't do that, it comes off as entitlement. And it plays in a lot of negative American stereotypes. And one of them being the attitude of, a, sorry to say that, but of saviors or colonizers. And I know you're gonna say, what does France have to, to say to anybody about that? Look, French people think that Americans think that they are better than everyone when clearly French people believe that they are better than Americans, basically. And so they find laughable those semi-condescending attitudes that to you might not seem condescending. I mean, you bought a hat. But it's condescending to act as if that entitles you to a person's time or to a person's uh, I'm not going to say manners, but let's say that in a lot of European countries, uh, people don't force smiles. So if people were kind in the south of Europe, it's because they are generally like that. They're not faking it. But if somebody in France is feeling miserable, they're going to complain to God and back. The whole planet will know if they lost their wallet or something like that. And if you are annoying them, they will not fake a smile. Now, for a lot of Americans, it might be shocking because Americans are very kind to people. They will smile a lot and they will think that that means respect. But in other places, being honest means respect. So a person talking overly kindly to you will be seen as that person mocking you. I mean, if you want to irritate a person who, but while being polite by irritating them, you're going to say, bien sûr, madame, je suis d'accord, madame. You're going to smile, to force the smiles and to force the, the formulas of politeness. And that's why American and French people sometimes have a, a difficulty in understanding each other because what's polite to Americans is literally insulting to French people. I'm going to be talking a bit more about the beret, but I'll first say my own experience about France. I love going to France and French people are adorable to me. They always recognize the Belgian accent, but that's the thing. I speak French. So immediately the first barrier is gone. And I actually find people very warm, even in Paris. Honestly, if I was living in Paris, I would be worse than they are. The amount of stress that that city creates is insane. Yet Parisians are still kind, still perfectly normal. They haven't been completely eaten up by stress. But that's something that a lot of tourists don't have an understanding for. Life in those cities is so insanely cluttered that people aren't going to be welcoming the, some empty chit-chats here and there. They don't have time to talk, especially if you're talking in English and now they have to furnish an additional mental effort. However, had you said bonjour at the beginning, you say bonjour, you're going to break the ice. And also you get to the point. 
Can you indicate me a nice place to hang by? Where can I meet new people? You can ask, but you have to ask directly because people have no time. Especially if, if it's in a foreign language, especially if it's in English. Because, again, there's that attitude towards Americans who are seen. There are stereotypes about American tourists who seem entitled and who are disappointed where everybody is not at their disposal all the time. And human beings in France are human beings, so they have their own lives and also their own cultural attitudes and symbols. One of them is the beret that you are wearing and that you said, I'm, I even bought a French hat. Yes, but... Who have you seen in France wearing the beret and how have you seen wearing it? Because if you're going to be wearing it like Emily in Paris or like an American tourist, like immediately, immediately people will see it. Immediately they will want to avoid you because first it's the personal stress. Oh no, they're going to talk to me in English. They are afraid that you're going to come up to them in English. That's, that's one of the things. And then if there is, there's some underlying prejudice, yeah, they're going to feel it too. So how do you see people in France wearing beret? Who do you see wearing the beret? Well, it's usually older men, right? But it's also becoming fashionable amongst younger people and in several colors like you have there. Now, I'm not saying be a French person, you are perfectly allowed to be a tourist. But uh, just like with everything, you know, when you wear something that comes from a certain culture, uh, people like to see, it, to see you wear it nicely. And it's true for European cultures too. So if you buy a beret, honestly, I mean, wear it nicely, wear it with nice clothes, combine it with a scarf either match it or create a contrast. You know, look a bit, you're in France after all, that's also an element there. Now, I'm not saying look like you're in a fashion show or whatever, but like you're wearing a piece that still has some association to the culture. So wear it, like combine it nicely. It will make immediately, it will make you more approachable. Because that's another thing. Sometimes people seem as not approachable, but oftentimes it's because they don't see you as very approachable. Even if you see yourself as a very open person, a very sociable person. I work with a lot of French people who speak English. There is still that feeling of insecurity that a lot of them have, even those who do speak English. So if you come to them speaking English immediately, they will see you as not very approachable. But if you, that's why I say, just say bonjour. If you do that, they will see that you are making effort and that you will be able to understand each other. If you come with a hello, they will think that you expect them to do all the work for them. They will say she isn't even bothering to say hello. Where will this conversation go from now on? So a lot of time people aren't mean as much as they're not mean, that, but you just inadvertently and that's the thing it's a communication matter you just made them feel like you don't care about them like you're here only to use everything for yourself that you aren't even bothering to i don't know to wear your hat properly to even say hello and that's seen as entitlement and that's seen as pretty insulting towards people who have a sort of pride so again, this is not a diss towards that person in particular. I feel really sorry that your experience was negative, but uh, the world is not an amusement park for American tourists. You can have fun in the world, but just just have the just keep in mind that people live there, that human beings live there with their own lives, with their own habits, with their own way of talking to each other. And if a group of people is closed off to you, it's, it's not generally because the whole country is evil or whatever, but that there was some miscommunication in details in those cues. Like, what, I immediate, what immediately struck me was the hat and the fact that she doesn't speak French. But not speaking French doesn't mean not learning five words, just to show that you have respect towards the culture and towards the local people of the country that you're in. Hey girl, I've been tagged in your video several times, so I wanna reply. First of all, I just wanna say, I'm sorry that you're not having the best time in France. Um, you're not crazy, you're not making it up, you're not losing your mind. I'm an American who's been living in France for the last seven years, and although I love French people, I do, they can be 
indifferent, unhelpful, and they can come across as mean and even confrontational. That's that's a real thing. You're not making that up. And I'm sorry that that's what you're experiencing right now. Your video almost made me cry. But I want to open a bigger discussion and maybe explain a little bit about what this is. I'm fascinated by French culture, particularly differences between French culture and American culture. I don't think you're American. I can't tell. It sounds like you might have an accent, but I think you might relate a little bit more to American culture than to French culture based on the experience you're having. So I want to share some things from this book. This book is life changing. It's called French and Americans, The Other Shore. It's written by a French man who married an American woman. So he moved to the US, he became a US citizen. And this entire book is about his observations between US culture and French culture. And oh my God, does it explain? It explains everything. And this is coming from a French man, so don't come for me. I'm just gonna give you some snippets here. First, the French are more prone to asserting raw facts as if they were unarguable. This as a means to place themselves in a position of authority figures in relation to those they are speaking to. Because of the French belief in scarcity, according to which only one of the speakers can be right or in a position of authority at any given time, this assertion is likely to produce a confrontational reaction, which is probably what you're feeling. And this is what I feel often when I'm in France, even after seven years, when I'm interacting with people, sometimes I find myself thinking, why are we fighting? Like if, if for example, if there's a small mistake and I say, hey, I think there's a mistake, the, the response that I get is, bah non, bah non, c'est pas possible. And it's rude and it's mean and it's dismissive. And I can't comprehend it because I'm like, it's okay. Like if you make a mistake, I don't think less of you. It's literally not a problem, but they fight to the death. And it makes sense because in French culture, they're kind of taught to fight to the death, but there's more, hold on. The critical French culture. The French first notice the negative aspects of any situation. What is wrong with what others said or wrote? How are they trying to con me? What do they want from me? What am I going to lose? In this context, the American tendency to emphasize the positive is regarded by the French as ridiculously naive. So in general, they just have a negative standpoint off the bat and Americans have a positive one off the bat. This next part is especially important when it comes to understanding the French and I've been wanting to talk about this forever. The French school system, okay? In French schools, the top grade is never given. The top grade is never given. In France, they do 20 out of 20. 20 out of 20 does not exist. The highest you will ever get is a 19 out of 20. Why? Because teachers believe that they and their students cannot both be right at the same time. So there's no way that the students could possibly be right. And this part especially is going to explain why you probably are getting an attitude when you're talking to people, being normal, asking regular questions, okay? Because the French are criticized at school when they do not know something, but are not praised when they learn it, they understand from an early age that they should never admit that they do not know something. Let me explain something to you. And I, I hope it's in this quote, but I'm just gonna say it, hopefully it comes up. In France, they use what types of questions you ask as a way to determine how smart you are. Because it is a high, I don't know, if high context, low context, Whatever the context is, it's one of those cultures where there's a lot of things left unsaid, whereas the U.S. is very high context, like we, we just lay it all out. In France, if you ask a stupid question, like a question that you should just know the answer to, the person that you ask it to is going to think that you are dumb. And not only are they going to think that you are dumb, but they're going to treat you like you're dumb because that's kind of just the culture here. Whereas in the U.S., we are taught that there's no such thing as a dumb question. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Actually, asking is a sign of intelligence because you're saying, I'm unclear and I want to be clear. That's a very good thing in the U.S. That's not how it is over here. So you might find yourself in France asking a question because you, because you're, you're literally saying, I putting my ego aside, I don't know and I, I would like your help. That's a nice thing and a smart thing. But in France, they see that as a stupid thing. Whereas Americans react to aggression by giving explanations or excuses or pulling back, which leaves them quite vulnerable when under attack from the French, the latter react to aggression by counter aggression. It is thus to the advantage of the French to launch preemptive attacks. Did you, re did you hear that? In American culture, when we're feeling like there's some aggression here, we pull back, we, we go, okay, no problem, my bad, how can I help? But the French come back harder. When I first got here, I had a lot of experiences like, you didn't really give examples, but I feel you, sister, I feel you. I made a lot of videos being like, why are they dicks? Why is everyone a dick around here? And you know what I got in the comments? French people saying, fight back. And I was like, but I don't wanna fight back. I don't wanna go to war. And they're like, no, that's what you gotta do. That's what the culture is. And when I started fighting back, I don't like doing it, it worked. Hold on, I'm gonna keep going. This is, we're not done here. Verbal abuse is consistent with the French way of personalizing and essentializing issues. It makes it possible to avoid discussing actual situations. Dominating others matters more than resolving problems. It is very difficult for the French, especially the French men, to sincerely apologize, to show genuine contrition as opposed to merely providing polite excuses. Yup, I can feel that. 
there's a lot more in here that I'll get to in another video, but my point is, in French culture, if you ask a question that they think that you should know the answer to, they might not be so kind to you because they're thinking, what a dumb question. They enter most situations already ready to fight. And in French culture, that's just, that's just how it is. It, like, like aggression or little disputes aren't seen as a bad thing, whereas they are in the US, right? And the other thing is, which I think could maybe contribute a little bit to the experience that you're having is because most people, if you have a permanent contract in France, you can't be fired. So the vibe that I get, I mean, this is a country where we do not, we do not live to work. We work to live in France, right? So even if they have a job, they're not like, I'm going to bend over backwards for my job. I'm going to give the best service. I'm going to die for my customers. No, they're kind of like, yeah, I go to my job. Not my problem. I've had literally like customer service people look me in the face and be like, not my problem. And I'm like, bro, it literally is your problem. It's literally your only job to do customer service. Like, what do you mean? Let me give you a great example. Cause I, I've been here for seven years. I speak French. I just went across the street because there's this place that does frames, like framing for photos. I went in there with two photos, walked in. I did all the stuff. I said, bonjour. And I said, yep. Like, I just have a question. Like I have these two photos. I would like to have them framed. From the moment I walked in, the woman was going, and I was like, I'm sorry, like, I'm, first of all, I'm a new customer. Second of all, I have the stuff and like, I'm, 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 she's already like shaking her head and dismissing me. And I'm like, bitch, what is happening? And I'm like, yeah, so I want to do this one. She's going, well, we can see like, on and I'm like, bitch, you are the, you are the, you are the photo framing shop. This is your job. I have photos. I have money. What is, why are we, why are you already telling me to fuck off? Do you know what I mean? And I'm sitting there asking her questions and I'm like, well, can you tell me a price? And she's like, it's going to depend on what you get. And I'm like, I know. So tell me what I can get. Do I look like it? I'm sorry. Getting photos framed is not like a, like a hot activity that everyone does. It's pretty fucking niche. Okay. So I'm coming in with photos and I'm asking you to help me figure out what to do the whole time. She was like bothered by me, annoyed. Like I, like she could not believe that I was in here asking her about frames like like what what was i what was i thinking and i and that's i re i actually i'm supposed to go out i ran home to reply to your video because i was so annoyed by her and i was like that poor girl who had this experience in lyon she probably thinks french people are jerks and she's having a bad trip french people are not always jerks and you're not just having a bad trip you're having an experience that a lot of people have and sometimes the french can just be a bit abrasive and i hate if you talk about it, people are going to say that you're complaining, but, but you're not because it's truthful. They don't put it this way. They don't go out of their way to make things easier. They choose the harder way. And I think in a way, when they see you squirming, as I just said in that book, when they see you squirming or going, oh, sorry, I didn't know, they come back and fight harder. And I need to continue reading this book. It's from a French man, so I'm not coming up with these words myself. He's saying it too. That is the culture. So I just want to say, I'm sorry that you're having not the best experience. You're not crazy. It can be like that sometimes. I love the French. I plan to stay here for the rest of my life, but it's not easy. They don't, they don't make it easy all the time. They can be nice. They can be lovely. I have French people that I would die for. But if you don't speak French and you come here, that can happen. Not all the time. So I don't know. I just want to let you know, you're not alone. You're not crazy. I hope it gets better. But you know what? You've been traveling for a while. I mean, based on what you said, you've been going to this country and this country and this country. It's If you had just gotten off the plane yesterday and landed in France, maybe these things wouldn't seem so frustrating. But it seems like you've been putting yourself out there in multiple situations that are like out of your comfort zone. Do you know what I mean? And maybe after a bit of traveling and like just moving all around, you're having one of those like you know, sometimes you have those days where like you just would like things to go nicely and then you're getting a bit of attitude and it just feels like, you know, when it rains, it pours. It sounds like maybe that's what's happening. I hope the rest of your trip goes better, but I just want to let you know, you're not alone. You're not alone. It can be like this for a lot of people. The French are lovely and I hope, I pray to God that before you leave, one French person at least gives you an example of what that can look like, what that niceness and kindness can look like because I promise it exists. But yeah, I'm sorry and I hope you have a good trip. And if you get to Paris, message me. I'll, I'll take you out to coffee. Okay. What do you guys think about the Asian American woman's experience and then what the other people are saying about our video? The second lady, I saw a lot of comments on that post talking about how, so are you trying to justify the fact that these people are rude? And you know, she's talking about how these people don't owe you uh, manners or something. If you're a tourist, they don't owe you their day. Like you feel really entitled if you are acting that way. And I feel like this lady might have probably to use the beret to, you know, draw the attention of people and maybe she's not getting the attention she needed and she feel frustrated and that was the reason why she made that video as well. She seems lovely in that video and just someone who wants to meet people, but maybe she's not getting the right way to get across to this 
these people there are comments of people saying why did you even go there people haven't learned from people sharing their own experience of visiting these places on tiktok like why are you guys going there she literally said she's not recommending this place for anyone going there solo i feel like i agree that her experience will have been better when there with someone else because maybe it won't get to her it can be so overwhelming when you go to a place alone and you try to mingle with the people and they just you know push you back and nobody is really having an open hand to draw you closer and talk to you about your culture and everyone seems so mean and so distant and not wanting to have a conversation with you i don't think is an entitled personality wearing the hat i feel like if it was actually a place where the people there genuinely care even if she's not doing something right but the, the efforts i feel like the efforts the second stitch was talking about saying she'll have said bon you I feel like the effort is this same effort that this woman is making wearing that beret. There was a comment I saw that this person was literally talking about how her wearing that beret is even one of the reasons why these people are not coming closer to her. The comment said, someone asked a question in the comment section and said, wearing a beret in France is rude with question mark, beret is cute. Then someone replied this person and said, it is a misrepresentation of our culture, a cliche if you want, it would be like wearing sombrero everywhere you go in Mexico. So basically saying how wearing that beret is a cliche, like maybe she had thought that the beret is going to draw people closer to her, but then it's literally just pushing them back. Let me hear what you guys think about what these people said, because I saw so many comments of people saying that, oh, you guys are justifying how rude the people in France are. But there was a particular stitch that I love so much, the stitch of the lady, the American lady who said she has been living in France, who was recommended in the book i feel like i love her stitch so much i would like to hear what you guys think about our video in the comment section people share their experience whenever they travel i love watching videos like that but then again it gives people heads up whenever they want to visit the same country because experience might not be the same but there might be some similarities let's continue this conversation in the comment section and i'll see you guys in the next one bye and i love you guys